Now ordinarily I will make a compost until it's right up to chest high and over time it will, it will break down and reduce as this one here has. This was made mm, somewhere four, six weeks ago or so. So let's have a look at deconstructing it and see what's doing under here. So let's just roll this back here to top off. You can see starting to break down nicely already. This is all the, um, the roughage I had from my cucumbers. They were green when they went in. See, they're knocking down nicely. And there's a bit of kelp in there. That's going gooey. I couldn't turn that over. It would be just so gooey and horrible. Definitely see the layers. Here's your roughage here underneath it. That's breaking down nicely. That, um, that old lump of kelp there, it's got all sorts of bacteria and fungi growing all over the place there look at it and it, remember we're doing this in the very middle of winter normally uh, compost are better to be made in autumn or spring so that's when we put a down will be four or five weeks now there's a couple of little tricks here that I haven't mentioned that are really quite important and that is air we must get enough air current through the compost to have the oxygen percolating through if we don't, it will go anaerobic. It will become like one of your ordinary squadgy blocks at the bottom of the garden. So we need to have an air channel through the bottom and down the sides. Now, the best way I've found of putting the air channel through the bottom is to grab a whole lot of light sticks, such as uh, willow wands. Um, you can even use flax leaves bound together in a, in a bundle. Lay them right down the middle of your compost and then you can build it over the top of it. <clears throat> and when you're finished making your compost, go around with a stout stick or a, uh, I tend to use a, a steel bar and make holes, I've already done this of course, from the side all the way down to the middle of your compost to allow the air to go through. See, that's nice and damp in there. If you want to check that you whether your compost is wet or not, that's nice and damp in there, so that's not an issue. I'm not going to water that any further. The last element I want to talk about in compost is the heat. So the important thing to understand is how much heat to have in your compost. I'd recommend that you, if you're making a compost, you go and buy a really cheap probe thermometer from one of the big box shops in town and check out the temperature as it comes. Because if it if your compost gets above 65 degrees Celsius, you start to kill the bacteria and the fungi that you're actually trying to generate. This is biological production, and we're looking at being able to intensively produce a lot of food in a very small area on a consistent basis. That's what it's all about, and being able to do it without expensive inputs, which is what really upsets the big organizations. This is not a corporate drive. Anyone can do it, any size farm, it doesn't take rocket science. Okay, this compost here is about a year old. We'll just break it open and we'll have a look at what we're going to end up with with the other composts. Now, it doesn't bother me that we've got a, a fair old go of um, cooch in here, because this is light enough to just pull out. So what we're left with is the forest floor. Look at that, beautiful stuff. If you put this on your saw, you've opened a magic door. It will work. You don't need anything else. You'll grow fantastic food using something like that. Look at that, the fungi strands in there are just absolutely delightful. See the mycelium hanging off the wood here? This, this is our nursery. This is what we're taking into the soil to make our soils healthier. Look at it, beautiful just what the planet needs. If everyone could do this in their own backyard, we wouldn't have a problem, and there'd be no one in this planet would be hungry.